Hey guys, um, so uh, I realize you haven't heard from me for a little while, uh, but I'm back on the game. Um, I'm heading up to Bancroft, I've got the week off work. Uh, I'll be talking at the Jamboree, so every day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 1 o'clock, uh, you'll have me talking at the lower venue. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, one of my newest book, uh, Geography of Collecting. So we'll talk about the book, we'll talk about some of the sites in the book. I'll have a couple of books uh, with me for sale, so I don't know how long they're going to last. I, I don't have a huge number, but i got enough to sell at least to the first group, I'd say. Maybe the... who knows? Um, anyway, what, what I'd like to just talk about today, though, is uh, I'm doing a, as a supplement to uh, the presentation itself. I'm, I've got a number of little short video clips, and in particular, I just want to talk to you about what I call the... Um, the Bones Reaction Series and the reason why mica ends up in these sheets and it's just part of the actual discussion in the presentation with reference to um, a period in Canadian history whereby mica was really something that was boosting our economy. Uh, so they use the mica, depending on which type of mica, in um, furnace doors, uh, for electrical, preventing uh, con you know, conduction of electricity, conduction of heat, Things like that. So, okay, the question, why is mica uh, always cleaving off in these lovely smooth sheets? So, what we're talking about here is we have what is known as uh, a silicon tetrahedra. And if you want to, I don't know if you can zero in on that or maybe I'll just pop it up separately as a picture. But the silicon tetrahedra, what we're talking about there is uh, a silicon uh, with a charge of a plus four silicon atom and around it be four oxygen atoms and when you put them all together it forms theoretically uh, a shape like um, a three-dimensional pyramid so <clears throat> this is all part of the Bones reaction series and the Bones reaction series for those of you who've done a, a little bit of introductory geology is two separate branches coming converging at, at a the formation of feldspar. The branch on the left is the one I really want to talk about, uh, the branch which involves structural change. So if you have a melt, a melt of rock, usually uh, when it's very, very hot, deep down in the middle of the earth, uh, the first thing you're going to have forming is olivine. Olivine is a single, is composed, structurally speaking, of sing single silica, silicon tetrahedron. Single, they're not joined in any way. Now as you start moving down, through the, through the cooling process, the next thing we're going to end up with is, is a pyroxene chain. And as you can see by the, the drawing, I'm just popping it up now, the, the pyroxene chain is these tetrahedron which are joined at two corners forming a long string. So that's our pyroxene. It has two cleavages at 90 degrees. You'll usually see that a pyroxene, pyroxenite type of mineral is, is a blocky type of mineral, dioxide being a good example of that. I don't come across a great deal of that while I'm up in the Bancroft area, but what I do come across a lot of is the affable. Now, if you want to zero in on, on a... This is a double chain. This is an affable chain whereby the strands are connected together. So not only are they connected at um, two edges of the pyramid, they're connected on the third edge as well. And Cleavages within the amphibole will be at 60 degrees and 120 degrees. So I've got a couple of amphiboles to show you guys. Um, here's an example of a quite a common amphibole in the Bancroft area. This is tremolite. So this is a, a, a lovely greenish tremolite from the Grace Lake area. Uh, it's a monoclinic crystal. So in other words, it's it's got its axis, and then from the axis it it's sloping. The axis is actually sloping. This is Miner's Bay, another kind of tremolite a lot darker um, and again we've, we've got uh, we've got uh, fluorictorite it's another monoclinic crystal that's that that is an amphibole this is kind of a rare one um, I got that from the Essenville area and then we've got horn blends these are horn blends so the horn blend that's just like a generic name I found these at Bear Lake some time back it's a generic word for for an amphibole a dark green amphibole Kind of something you would name it just out in the field before you get a little more specific, right? 
Again, you can see it's got a hexagonal cross section. This is what, what is typical to the horn blend. Hexagonal cross section, um, prismatic, pretty heavy, right? Because it's rich in iron, magnesiums. So then, of course, now as we're cooling through the Bones reaction series, each one of these minerals that I presented to you is, is a mineral that's been going through the cooling process. Again, we started up at the, um, at the olivines, which are cooling deep down in the middle of the earth. We talked about pyroxenes, which are a single chain. We talked about amphiboles, which is a double chain mineral. Now, as we cool even further, uh, and at the very end of the, the, bow action, uh, the Bowen's reaction series, is mica. So, mica forms in sheets. So we're talking about these, um, tetra, uh, these, these chains forming, all joining together in flat sheets. And then between the sheets, you've got your flat sheets of mica, between the sheets, you have potassium bonding the sheets together. It's a weak bond. So between the, the actual sheet itself, what forms the sheets, the bonds between the chains are pretty strong. The potassium bond underneath is quite weak. So you, it's like a sandwich. Potassiums with chains bonded together in, in flat planes. That's why the mica cleaves so well. Here's a, here's a, a really neat mica like a, a sheet of mica that I found. You can see it from the side. So obviously we're looking at our potassium bonds along the side and then of course, of course across the top. If I really want to, I can chip this away. This is a phlogopite mica, uh, which I found at the Stoness mine, excuse me, Stoness mine, um, earlier in the year. And there's way more there. It's, it's in a calcium. Uh, lovely, you know, lovely big sheets of mica there. Uh, the Lacey mine, uh, that's probably one of the world's premier locations for mica. Sadly, the location of the Lacey Mine has been lost from the memory of rock hounds and pretty well everyone else, but it exists in eastern Ontario. There are a number of sites where it might possibly be, I hope later this year, to, to follow up and see if we can actually find the Lacey Mine. So that's your mica. Um, what comes after mica are various feldspars in the cooling process. Uh, at the Just after the mica, at the, at the potassium feldspar, uh, the Bones reaction series comes together from the discontinuous reactions and the continuous reactions, they come together as one single reaction, finally leading you to quartz, which is the last thing that will cool in the cooling process of, um, you know, a silicates, um, SiO2, um, minerals that include both silicate, silica and oxygen. A quartz has a three-dimensional structure. The three-dimensional structure um, when it breaks, it's not going to cleave nicely. It's going to have conchoidal fractures, almost like glass. It has a, an internal structure that is not easily uh, broken, hence the reason we get these. Um, there's your quartz crystal. Uh, you can see a bit of a fracture there. It's just kind of granular. Often you will find those divots. I'm not really seeing an example of the divot there. I don't have a, a badly fractured quartz to show you. So, guys, um, we'll see you at the Jamboree, those of you that are coming. Um, what, you'll just get a very short snippet of what I'm talking about here because the presentation is actually a much larger thing. It will probably go on for 40 minutes to an hour. We'll ask the questions at the end. I will have some books to sell. Look forward to seeing you guys and um, I'm also going to do a couple of trips this week. So we'll have some interesting stuff to talk about afterwards as well. Uh, a couple of videos to follow. Thank you.